Hi, in this video, I just wanted to walk you through me taking an initial look at the managed environments preview. So quick disclaimer, it's in preview, so it's not set in stone and shouldn't be used for production purposes. But let's say it is set in stone and we do want to use it for production purposes. So you will need to have a, you'll only be able to do this against an environment that has a Dataverse database associated with it, which I would hope that we're all on the Dataverse train these days, plus, if, if for nothing else, solutions and for certain configurable things such as this, which require the use of Dataverse. So let's say I want to enable it. I'm, I would click on the environment and we would click on enable managed environments. But here, I've already enabled it, so I'm just going to click on Edit Managed Environments. So there is a key thing to call out here, actually, because when you initially go to enable this against an environment, I didn't notice this at first, first but a big thing here, once enabled, end users will need standalone Power Apps or Power Automate licenses to run apps and flows in this environment. So this is a bit of a double-edged sword because, okay, users aren't gonna be able, able to do that with your Power Apps that you get with just your Microsoft 365 licensing, which may be desirable, but then equally the other edge of that sword, as I say, you may want to force that. So if you imagine, you did this against your default environment, which by default, all users would have access to create Power App, Power Platform elements in. By making it managed, providing this comes to see the light of day, that could almost be a way of controlling what users get to make apps in this environment, because you may go, actually, well, we are gonna, we are fully behind the Power Platform technology we are going to invest in the licensing so users can make use of the full capabilities of it but as part of a onboarding maybe sign sign their life away process you could have it so that the user once you're happy and then knows the the rules of engagement gets an official license and they are then able to create power platform elements within the default environment that, that's just kind of where my head is at with that. Other thing to call out. So coming back to this, it's kind of limited configurable options at the moment. So include this environment is basically the actual enablement of, of the enable managed environments. But again, another key bit that you might miss is email recipients for all managed environments. So not just this one. But you'll also notice that all Power Platform administrators and Dynamics 365 administrators are going to receive a weekly digest. So good, clear and concise information about the usage of an environment. So the better way to go with this is probably just the sort of people that you would want to receive these weekly digests. You might just want, want to make sure they are a Power Platform ad administrator or a Dynamics 365 administrator. The kind of key configuration element to this above and beyond getting information is this whole limit sharing concept. And I like the idea behind it because what they're essentially saying or protecting a user from is that if you give permissions to a Canvas app by way of a security group, which is good practice, you can't easily see how many users are actually getting access. So they may know at that point in time, there's only say 10 users in that security group, but you still go to the Power App, look at the share permissions and you see the one security group. Who's to say that by some other process, 500 users are now in the security group, which is a bit of a red flag because one from a business perspective, you're thinking, we've got an app that's used by the majority of the company now. We want to make sure it's done in an approved way. 
and manner. So that's what that one's going to do. Similar to doing it on a group basis, you can just limit the number of users. So here I'm thinking uh, such as you've got this environment that houses department apps and you've only really got 20 users per environment, uh, per department. You might want to give a bit of a buffer for future recruitment, say call it 30, and that way you can make sure that these department specific apps are really only there's a good chance they're only being used by that department with the the number of individuals you specified although the the kind of drawback here i see is is the fact that you're doing this in, at an environment level and not specifically at an app within an environment level next thing data policy so nothing new there we're talking about the the data policies which you can manage but what this is going to do is allow you to to easily have a filtered view of the data policies that are just specific to that environment okay thanks for watching